guess where I am? I am in an airplane hangar, but Howard Hughes is not taking off in his golden helicopter. I am standing in the middle of a media mecca, a digital playground, the stone cold straight up epicenter of infotainment. Space LA. episode of Smart Girls at the Party, the show that celebrates young girls who are changing the world by being themselves. With us today is musician, dancer, traveler, hip-hop composer, violinist, and fellow Virgo, Lindsay. Hey, Lindsay. Hi. Thank you for being here. Oh, thanks so much for having me. You are here today because you have a YouTube channel. What is it? Tell us about it. I basically like to take the violin to places that you wouldn't normally expect it to go to, both, I guess, in location settings and also just in the types of music I play. I play everything from orchestral soundtracks to dubstep violin tracks and everything in between. So when did you start playing the violin? So I started when I was six years old, just a little wee thing. And did you have a tiny violin? I did. I had one of those like ones, they look like a toy, they sound like a shoebox, but you know. And do you, do you ever come from a musical family? My parents love music. They're always playing classical records in the house. Um, and that's why me and my sisters all gravitated to wanting to play instruments. A lot of young people pick up instruments and they get frustrated really fast. You right. know? Uh -huh. They want to learn how to play something and they're not doing it perfectly and then they put it down. What would you say to those people? From just based on my own experiences, I always tell people it's not about, you know, it's not about how fast it is, it's about how much you put into it for sure, especially the violin. It's such an awkward instrument, like, you know, to hold your body in that way, it's very uncomfortable and it's comfortable to me now and any violinist, but it, it, there's a huge learning curve and it's the people that persevere that are going to make it. It's the people that do the boring exercises and reward themselves afterwards with something fun. Those are the, and that's what I always tell them is do the hard stuff, do the boring stuff, but then make sure you make it fun and mm -hmm. reward yourself with the stuff that you love. And you reward yourself on your channel because you get yeah. to do really cool stuff. Tell, tell us what you do. So I, my favorite stuff to write are my electronic beats. I, I feel like my soul is driven by electronic music. When I hear it, I just am alive. And so I love writing electronic music with a violin as the feature. And then um, I've always been kind of a film nerd. High school, I was always dragging my friends into music videos and I, that I would direct and produce. And, you know, they were terrible. But, you know, <laughs> this was my life in high school. And so it's just so funny that the things I did in high school, the things I loved then, have turned into my career now. And I, I absolutely love thinking of ideas. And, and I edit all my own videos. Videos and I, I mean I'm just this little film nerd and mm -hmm. I so the whole process of seeing the song born to when a finished music video is on the web that's that's what I do what kind of advice would you give someone who is just starting out and wants to create a YouTube channel or just wants to create art like how how do they how do they stay true to themselves and still get to do what they love well, I think honestly being true to yourself is the absolute key to being successful in this kind of a model um, because that, you can't fake authenticity you can't fake loving something and honestly to any I think any artistic form or medium you have to work so hard to get you know get your stuff heard or seen and so if you don't absolutely love it you will burn yourself out and the only way I'm able to do what I do is you know I'm almost a workaholic because I love what I'm doing mm -hmm. and it's okay like I because I'm enjoying it, because I love the people that I work with, it's, you know, it doubles as work and recreation. And if I didn't love it, it would be impossible. Well, Lindsay, we are going to end our interview today with a hard hitting question. I feel like I've thrown you a few softballs here, and now oh. it's time to get serious. Would you rather be a genie or a mermaid? Ooh, a mermaid. So fast. Tell us why. Oh, I don't know. Just watching uh, Little Mermaid as a kid. And uh, yeah, just the, the ability to live underwater in a whole completely different world, uh, surrounded by fish that look like flounder. <laughs> well, that's and you're not confined to a, uh, a lamp for your life. I think that's the biggest thing. The ocean is your world rather than a, a lamp. You do not like to be confined. I don't. You like a big world and you like swimming in it. I do. Mermaid or genie? Meredith, what's your choice? Mermaid. Well, I'm gonna say 
I would have said genie until you gave me the mermaid explanation. <laughs> and now really? I want to say mermaid. But my first thought is that I wanted to grant wishes, but I think you're right. I think mermaid's the way to go. Lindsay, you are so <laughs> awesome. It was so, so great to have you. Thank oh, you so much for you. coming to Thanks our show. Thank you for having me. And we wish you great success on your channel and everything that you do in your life. And, and we know that everything you do will be amazing. So thanks so much for being here. Well, thank you. It's very You're fun. Welcome. So we're going to end this episode like we end every episode. One, two, three. Dance party!